Pastor, are you there? I don't think he's there. Gene? Hey, Susan. Is yeah. the pastor here? Well, what are those hands doing right now? Are they wrestling with rapid? He hasn't said anything, so I don't think so. I can't hear you. You and I are the only one so far. I can't hear you, Jane. I said you and I are the only one Let so far. God bless, God bless. All right. God bless you too. All right, Sister Laura says she can't hear. Let me see here. I can't hear you guys. Oh, I know why. I <laughs> know why I can't hear because I got my earplugs plugged in and don't have them in my ear. All oh. the sound is coming through my. <laughs> Sometimes I do it myself, but Lord, don't worry about it. <laughs> All my sound is coming through my earplugs and I don't have a bed. <laughs> bless you. Bless you. Amen. Good to see everyone tonight. Amen. Good to see you, Sister Yvette. Amen. God How bless you. Doing? Good, good. Did everybody have a good Thanksgiving? Uh, yes, yes, I, I did. did. So oh. I'm I'm gonna leave for five seconds. Yes. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Just a reminder, uh, we will only be meeting tonight and next week, and then after that, we'll be on break until January. Amen. Okay. Uh give everybody a, a time to enjoy the holiday. Uh, we'll probably do the same thing over the summer. Whenever uh, uh, five is, or, uh, when summer comes, we have a summer break. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Praise God. We're going to give it a few more minutes for everybody to come in. Hope everybody was able to get into the lesson and able to... Um, we say hello to everybody on the phone as well. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Um, we're going to get started with the prayer. Amen. Sister Jean, you mind praying for us? Praying, starting us out in prayer tonight? <laughs> Amen. Opening up for us. <laughs> My whatever, goodness. Whatever the Lord put on your heart. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Can Father? Thank you for uh, 
allowing us to come together to study your word, continue to be with us and guide us from your Father, help us to understand and be of good cheer, Heavenly Father. Uh, I pray that everyone is doing well. I uh, hope that um, the COVID is not um, have caught anyone at home, and I'm hoping that um, things will be better in the future, Heavenly Father. Yes. I pray that we have a better year coming up, and uh, that uh, that we will continue to be well and happy. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Amen. 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 That was beautiful. Prayer. Thank you for praying us through tonight, Sister Jean. Amen. Uh, we're going to pick right back up. Just a reminder for those that have just joined us uh, on the phone and online, uh, we will be meeting on this week and next week, and then we'll be on break until January after next week. Amen. I uh, want to thank everybody for coming again. We're going to start again on I don't know what page you have, but on page 16, we're going to start at the very top. Amen. I want to just uh, let everybody know that as you as you are studying this lesson, picture yourself in how you identify with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God yourself. How you identify with the um, the unction of it. How do you identify when you think? Uh, it, uh, God speaks to you and how you react throughout this lesson. Amen. That is the best way to handle this lesson. Amen. As you uh, go through. So we want to talk about, uh, we talked a little bit about um, the diagram on last week. We'll get back to that towards the end of the night. But at the top, it says Jesus's example. It says the father has been working right up until now. Now the Father has me working. I do nothing on my own initiative. I watch to see what the Father is doing. I do what I see the Father doing. The Father loves me. He shows me everything he is doing. Amen. Um, uh, and this is Jesus' example. Um, the author says here, this model applies to your life personally and also to your church. It is not a step-by-step -step approach for knowing and doing God's will. It describes a love relationship through which God accomplishes his purposes. I sum it up this way. Watch to see where God is working and join him. So we've talked about a number of times about the intimacy of our relationship with God. And that is to be so close with God that we know when God speaks and we know when we're hearing God speaking and we react to what God is saying. Amen. Um, the author goes on to say that God is always at work around you. Right now, God is working all around you as well as in your life. One of the greatest tragedies amongst God's people is that although they deeply long to experience God, they are encountering him day after day, but do not recognize him. By the end of this course, you will have learned many ways to clearly identify God's activity in and around your life. The Holy Spirit and God's word will instruct you and will help you know when and where God is working. I wanna jump down to where he says, um, you will experience God accomplishing his purposes through your life when you enter the kind of intimate love relationship with God. You will know and do his will and experience him in ways you have never known before. You cannot achieve this by following a spiritual formula. Only God can bring you into this kind of relationship. I want to stop there tonight just to ask a simple question. How would you describe your relationship with God as it sits right now? Uh, uh, anybody would be so bold as, as to answer that. Well, I think we have, have a, uh, I'm sorry. No, no, Belora, before you answer that, I want to know you personally. 
How, how do you, how did not, don't include we, but how do you personally uh, say that your relationship is with God? Okay. I think that my relationship with God is a love relationship. I think he loves me and I love him. He probably loves, I probably don't show as much as I feel that I would like to, mm -hmm. but I think we do have a love relationship. All right, Jean, you was gonna say something. No, I was gonna ask you to repeat, but now you did repeat what you had asked. Okay, okay, okay. But, uh, yes, I think that um, I have a relationship with God. Um, I know that he answers prayer. And, Amen. Um, he, he, he does answer my prayer. I mean, he doesn't answer it right away. Sometimes he does answer it right away. Right, but, um, right. He's there and I know he cares. All right. Let us go again to John, the fifth chapter. Let's go to John, the fifth chapter. And um, we read this the last time we were together, but I, I want to look at it again. Uh, John, the fifth chapter. And we want to look at these. Uh, I want to start back at the 14th verse. So John 5 and 14 says, Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more lest the worst thing come unto thee. Amen. Notice here as Jesus provides healing, he personalizes his healing, this person's healing, okay? Uh, when he says, behold, thou art made thou, in other words, you are made whole. Sin no more, okay? So this, this blessing was for him, amen. Um, uh, another example of this is when Jesus raises Lazarus. Notice in the scripture, when Jesus raises Lazarus, he says, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible makes it a point to personalize Lazarus' uh, raising, okay? We'll come back to that uh, either today or some other time. There's a lot more I'm gonna say on that. Verse 15 says, the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Verse 17 says, but Jesus answered them, my father worketh hitherto and I work. Guess what Jesus is describing here? He's describing God's will. The people are looking at Jesus for the one that did the healing. But Jesus is, is simply trying to tell them, it's not me. It's my father who sent me. Okay, verse 18, verse 8, and we're going to come back here. Verse 18 says, therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. And then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and, and she with him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Okay. Any questions on what we just read? Gene, you look like you was going to say something. No. Okay. Um, now, in what we just read, Jesus is distincting, he's, he's, he's distincting the relationship the people should have with him as Jesus and the relationship people should have with God as God. The people got upset and sought to crucify Jesus for several reasons. Number one, because they thought he went against the written law. 
the written law in the Old Testament or the Torah said that on the Sabbath day, you do what? You rest. You weren't supposed mm -hmm. to do nothing. Okay? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. other than them seeing the fact, oh, this dude just did a miracle on, a, on, a, on what the law said, we ain't supposed to do nothing. They don't see the fact of who and what Jesus is and what they come from. They immediately go to Jesus as the benefactor. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then they go so far as to think that Jesus is claiming that he is the deity or the God. You will see here uh, in verse 18, they said they make himself, he make himself equal with God. So clearly they still do not recognize who Jesus is. But Jesus goes forward in 19 and 20 describing to them that he who is before them is the product of God. That it is not God, it is not Jesus doing the healing, but it's God doing the healing. That is in that the same way that we should identify with God. I know I said this a little bit on last week, but, but if you yourself come to familiar, you familiarize yourself with the invitation or the or the Jesus that you believe in that brought you to your belief in God, it will enhance your relationship with God because you learn to appreciate what God has done through your belief in Jesus. Okay. Um, any questions, comments on that before we go further? Valor, you look like you want to say something. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, now what I need to happen right now is anybody give me one some, any part of that verse we just read. Any any part of what we just read? Give me one of them because we're gonna take one of them apart. Or one that stuck out to you. Well, Jesus said his father was doing the work and and um and the father shows him everything that he does and he does what the father does. Okay, so you talking about verse 19. So let's look at verse 19. That the one you were speaking of? No, I was just wanting y'all to take any one of them that we just read. Oh, okay. Because we finna pick it apart for a minute, okay? And I'm glad you brought that one up because that's probably the, one, the most difficult one but it's the most meaningful one, okay? So let's look at John 5, verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he see of the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Okay, so, Belora, would you say the most meaningful part for you in that scripture was what? When Jesus says he comes by way of the Father. Is that the most meaningful part? If not, that's fine. To give me any other part. I, I think the most meaningful is, is he is saying that this is what the father is doing and I'm right. doing it because the father is working through me. So the father is showing me all these things to do. So I'm, I'm doing it at the will of the father. That's right. Very good. Very good. Everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, yes. this is what I want you to do. What I want you to do, anybody can do this. Reword that verse where it strikes meaning for you personally. Or you might have to reread yes. it and restate that I, verse. I could what say, is that verse saying to you? I could say when I'm in, in, when I'm really being obedient and following the leading of God, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. as it speaks to me, is that I am doing what God is directing me to do, and I can only do it through his will. Amen. Anybody else want to add to that? Okay, now, knowing that what we just stated, this is a group exercise now. Everybody got to participate. I see you down there, birthday girl. <laughs> okay. 
Now that we all understand that, what would your response be to what you, what Valora just said in terms of what you are to do in response to that? Like in knowing and reading what you just read, what do you think the scripture is, is calling for you to do out of response? Anybody? The same thing to do, do as Jesus did to, we're supposed to be uh, helping the poor, looking out for each other, um, doing um, things through the church, through Christ to help people. That's right, that's right. And so this is how experiencing God happens that allows our relationship to be more cultivated with God. Is when we take the scripture, this is just one example of us taking the written word of God and then reaccounting what does it mean? Okay, what is that saying to me? And then finally, what am I going to do in response to what I just read? And as we do that, basic case in point, like Marianne just said, is the fact that we are to use Jesus as our example. That's the basic case in point of this scripture. The fact that Jesus is telling these disciples, it is not me doing all this. It is the one that sent me. And, and by that, you look at that as an example of who and what God is in our life. We are to react the same way. That's truthfully how we are supposed to relate to scripture. When I'm trying to preach, I'm trying to preach in a way that I can fixate the one listening to me in the middle of what I'm talking about. Because, because truthfully, the scripture is, is supposed to come alive within us as a guide that can reinvigorate our lives to change. It's supposed to be that meaningful. Any comments, questions on that? Well, I believe that because I believe if we hear the truth, we should uh, internalize it and try to live it out. Daily. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? All right, we're going to move on to uh, a lot of what Sister Marianne was talking about on day three, learning to be a servant of God. Many scripture passages describe Jesus as God's servant. He came as a servant to accomplish God's will to redeem humanity. Here's what Paul said about Jesus. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Amen. That coming from Philippians 2, 5 through 8. The author says in his instructions to his disciples about servanthood, Jesus, the son of man, described his own role of service this way. Whosoever wants to become great among you must be your servant and whosoever wants to be first must be your slave just as the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many jesus also identified what our relationship with him should be like as the father has sent me i am sending you that comes from john 20 and 21 now here in this exercise it says Based on these scriptures uh, and others, you may be familiar with, do you believe you should be God's servant? You say yes, okay? Uh, number two says, have you ever given your best effort to serve God and felt frustrated when nothing lasting resulted from your work? Yes or no? Yes. In your own words, Define what a servant is. Really, Sister Marianne really just talked a lot about that. 
I would say a servant is someone that looks out for the welfare of someone else before themselves and uh, willing to sacrifice what they would like to do or uh, make sure that. Right. Thank you, Sister Yvette says, one who listens. And I'm glad Sister Yvette is bringing this up because that, that leads to a major point tonight. And before we get to that, let's look at Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. It's in the Old Testament scripture. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses, verse one, starting at verse one. It says, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words. That I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as the potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in potter's hands, so are ye in mine, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. Now, Jeremiah in this, Actually, before I talk about that, I also want to look at one other scripture. And we're going to talk, we're going to talk about both of these at once. Let's look at Isaiah, the book of Isaiah chapter six. And this is a lot of scripture we're about to read, but I really want to make a point here. Keep the one Jeremiah's in mind. Isaiah chapter six. This is... Uh, the commission from the prophet Isaiah it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. About it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. I want to skip down um, to uh, verse 5. Verse five says, then said I, woe is me, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I will dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for mine eyes have seen the King of the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the ser seraphims unto me having a live coal on his hand. I'm sorry about that, and, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it down upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell his people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not and see ye indeed, but perceive not. In both of these examples, we, we see detailed instructions, we see detailed accounts, and we, we, hear, we see and can actually visualize detailed responses. But in, but in both examples, None of them would have been able to respond unless they were open to what they were being to, to what they were receiving. Mm -hmm. So that goes back to what Yvette said uh, of listening. If you are not open to receiving, to listening, to seeing what the Lord is showing you, then you are not then moldable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you are not moldable, if you are not acting as the potter in the clay, mm -hmm. then you are not experiencing what God, where God is leading you in life. 
in both examples we read, both, both prophets were open to what and how the Lord was showing them. So when, 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 what are you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is, is that as God speaks to us, as God shows us, as God reveals to us, we need to be ready and willing to, as Isaiah said, go and do based on what the Lord is showing and allowing us to see. Amen. Because God, who thank you, Holy Ghost. God allows us, <laughs> I feel like preaching tonight. God allows us to see certain things for a reason. Yes. Yes. God allows that to happen. Amen. I always love how Isaiah details his, his, his calling from God. How he details what he saw. How he details how he revealed the instruction. I love that. Because, because a lot of times the detail is what should convict us. Woo, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of times how God touched us is how we are to be led by God. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to pay attention to detail tonight. We, that's how you, you can be molded. When we say pot and clay, the, 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 we got to be moldable in every area of us in order to be led by God. Questions, comments on that? Okay, the author says uh, two things. It says the clay, number one, has to be molded. It has to be responsive to the potter, which is God, so he can make it into an instrument of his choosing. Number two, the clay has to remain in the potter's hand. Woo! Amen. Thank you, Yvette. What you say? Sometimes it's hard to get off, to get out of self. Yes, 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 yes. Sometimes, yes, and, and y'all will hear me talk about this a lot, that, that we need to remember we need to stay within the spirit or look in the spirit realm or look under our spirit vision and get outside of flesh. Flesh will kill us. Flesh will stir us in the wrong direction. And we ourselves should know or feel what flesh is doing to us. Mm -hmm. Give you a case in point. I love soda. In California, y'all say soda. I love it. Oh, I love that stuff. I get it actually from my mom. When I was growing up, my mama had Pepsi all around the house. And she loved Pepsi. And, and I really believe that I was the one that took after her with Pepsi. And usually I get the urge when I'm on the road somewhere, when I'm driving for a long time. And, and I've been trying to quit for a long time because, you know, it's not good for me. Amen. But, but when I was on the road recently, I had the urge to get a Pepsi. I wanted a Pepsi so bad, I just wanted to pull up and go get a Pepsi. But it was not until I realized my urge that I got outside of that urge to want that Pepsi. Once I realized what I was doing myself, once I realized, you know, we got to stop this. Oh, I just can't help myself. You know, yes, you can. When we, when we realize ourselves, what we ourselves are doing, that's us in the flesh. We got to be able to come out of the flesh to see beyond what, what us. Amen. Any insight on that? Right. You, ha you have to ask the Lord to help you. Yeah, you do. And ask yeah. the Lord to remove the taste and remove the desire. Yes. Because like when I stop uh, indulging in my favorite beverage, <laughs> <laughs> it said, Lord, take the taste out of my mouth. That's right. And he did it. And I, I wanted to say, Lord, I didn't mean forever, but he did it forever. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. 
Notice that in the scripture, the word in, in the first scripture we read in Jeremiah, it said in Jeremiah 18, it says the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord. So Jeremiah in his book distinctively makes it a point to say that this word comes from God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If we can declare, we have to ourselves be able to openly uh, declare that what we're receiving is coming from God and the devil <laughs> and Satan. You know, we know ourselves, you, when you feel within yourself something ain't right, that's Satan. All right. Um, I told you on Sunday about uh, uh, my second wife. You know, she used to say all the time, you, everything you say and do, you know, what is God trying to show me? That's the way we're supposed to be. That's just me. <laughs> because that's the only way that I personally can stay on track with how God is directing me. What is God showing me in this situation? What is the message I'm supposed to be, get with God? How does God want me to interact with this person? Mm -hmm. How does God want me to interact with this situation? So that's me being moldable, mm -hmm. being moldable, being willing for God to, to engage and change me. We got to be willing to let go. God, God, I surrender all to you. We need to be able to say, God, I surrender, change me, mold me. Mm -hmm. Make me different. And when we do, that's a true servant of God. Amen. Question, comments on that? All right. Now, um, activity four says, how much can a servant do by himself or herself? Anybody? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. That's right. And I know these questions sound trivial, you know, but you know, they're good questions. Mm -hmm. The second one says, when God works through a servant, how much can that servant do? Anything God can do. That's right. That's right. So, so, okay. And I'm glad you said that Jean, like you did. Truthfully, there is no limit to what we can do as long as God is in it. I think yeah. sometimes we think yeah. that there is a limit but if we identify, if we recognize that God is with us, then we we distinctively can do His purpose. Uh, the question uh, Yvette says, "How can you serve without instructions?" Amen. Um, again, the only way that you can serve is if you spiritually seek Him. Truthfully, even if we think that we don't hear from the Lord, the Lord is talking to us and showing us. That's another uh, example of, 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 of what the author says, that we have to find where God is and join him. You want to hear this author say this a lot in this Bible lesson. We need to be able to discover, even in a dead, in a binding, in a hurtful in a hard situation, we have got to discover God. Think about the three Hebrew boys, all right? The three Hebrew boys found God in the fire. The story goes that there were three Hebrew boys that would not bow down to Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. and, and he threw them in the raging fire, and, and uh, they discovered him in the fire as well as Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar said, I see a fourth man in that fire. Yeah. We have to have confidence that even in a raging situation, God is there with us. Yes, he is. Uh, any other insight on that? All right. Uh, the other question was, what are two things a servant must, be, must do to be used by God? That's a good one. What are two things that a servant must do to be used by God? Obedience. Obedience. Yes. You must do what they're instructed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? All right. Let us look at uh, First Kings. Any questions or comments on anything we're saying? 
All right, let's look at First Kings. So what are we looking at now? First Kings. First Kings. First King, King, the first book of Kings, uh, the 18th chapter. Uh, and I'm only going to read part of the scripture. First King, the 18th chapter. And let's look at uh, verse number 15. Okay. First King, the 18th chapter, verse number 15 says, And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou, art, art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Baal. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. I want to skip down to um, let's go to verse 29. And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. I love how detailed this is, okay? I want to skip down to verse 37. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may, may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. All right? Now, that brings us to number five. How many false prophets did he face at Mount Carmel, Elijah? Anybody? 850. All right. What did Elijah do to the altar of the Lord? He restored it. All right. Uh, I want to skip down to G. What was God's work in this event? He brought down the fire from heaven. Say it again, Sister G. He brought down the fire from heaven. All right, exactly. And finally, what was Elijah's work in this event? Oh, we did that. Okay, mm -hmm. now, in reading that in its detailed form, Oh, even before I say that, hold on, let's go to the, back to the book. Elijah was outnumbered 850 to 1. If God had not displayed his power by coming in fire and consuming the sacrifice and altar, as Elijah had proposed, Elijah would have utterly failed. That would have cost him his life. Elijah repaired the altar of the Lord. He had to stay with God and do everything God commanded him to do. What is this scripture saying to you? It is descriptive means. If you were back, to you, do, you can do all things through Christ. God will long, give you. God will give you what you need when you need it. That's true. As long as you do what? Obey. Obey. Trust. Right. 
Trust. Do, yes. do, what, do what it is he's, he's commanded you to do. Yes, yes, yes. So let's go back to the exercise. In knowing all of that, what is your response to go, to do? In response, in knowing all that, what Marianne just said, what is your response to life? Anybody? My, my response to life? Or what is your response in knowing all that what Marianne just said? What is your response in what in your present point in time in your life to do in response to knowing all that? Okay, to recognize God as uh, as the um, the head of your life and that you can do nothing without Him, but you yes. can do it all with Him. Yes. Yes. That, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. If I heard if I heard everything that uh, Marianne was saying, but. <laughs> Yeah, I no, think that, the main yeah, that, point that was the gist of it. Yeah, that was the gist of it. Yeah. What is stopping you from doing that? Maybe not Valora, but anybody else. What is stop? What do you feel is stopping you to get to that point where you know that even if you are outnumbered, the Bible tells me, even if I trust, even if I'm outnumbered. I can trust in him who will not leave me. And I can do as long as I obey okay. him directing me to do it. What is what is stop what what traditionally is stopping us from doing all that? Anybody. And, not, and don't just say the devil. Self and pride. Amen. Self, pride, yes. Yes. And basically the old saying is leaning to your own understanding. Right. You, might, is you let self take over and say, oh, I can handle this. You don't say that, but you feel it and you <coughs> act out like I can handle this without uh, uh, waiting for the Lord to show you That's what to right. do. That's right. That's right. That's all good stuff. That's all good stuff. All right. Any other comments on that? Questions? Okay, what do you feel personally? Give me one thing personally you can do in response to that. Anybody? Let me just say for me, what I'm going to try to do personally is, um, be more prayerful, be much more prayerful about listening to him. That's why I personally, I'm going to commit to be more prayerful, seeking his face by listening to his guidance, asking for discernment. We've been talking about discernment a lot lately, asking for discernment, for his direction, and for his guidance. Because truthfully, if you look back at the scripture, Elijah had to have trust that he was not alone. And not only did he have to have trust that he was not alone, but he had to have trust that as he goes, God is with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that as he goes, he hears from God. He, he, excuse me, he adheres to God's direction. He hears, adheres to God's guidance. And he, he is to where God is taking him. But he has to trust, as Marianne said, that God is there. Question, comments on that? Okay, I really don't want to go to the last, into the last part of this day. Um, any final comments, observations? I know we said a lot and did a lot tonight. Amen. Um, we want to say in advance, happy birthday to Sister Marianne. God bless you. We hope you enjoy. Tomorrow, in, in, second. Yeah, in advance. Tomorrow, uh, we hope you enjoy tomorrow, and God bless you. Um, and uh, we will see everybody on next week. Uh, let us prepare to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, amen. Amen. Sister Yvette said happy birthday. Amen. Bless you. It's tomorrow. Amen. We, we will <laughs> celebrate. Uh, and during that time. We say hello thank and you. thank you for everybody on the phone. God bless you. Uh, and we pray that you continue 
to join us. Let's pray. Gracious and most heavenly Father tonight. God, again, we come thanking you for this lesson. God, I just feel a mighty move of you amongst us, Lord, as we're on the internet, as we're on the phone. God, continue to bless, continue to touch, oh God, continue to bless our families, bless our situation. God, we need you, oh God, we need you. God, we heard, we said tonight that we cannot stand alone. We cannot do anything alone. We cannot do anything in and without you. God, we need you tonight. God, we need you. God, I come here praying that you will come into all of our households and all into our situations and our jobs and our families. God, we entrust in you everything that's going on right now. God, bless tonight, touch tonight, heal tonight, yeah. send your word tonight. God, cover us, Lord, with your blood, with your son. God, we need you for protection. We need you for discernment. We need you for guidance on tonight. Oh God, we need you, God, for healing. There are some broken hearts, oh God, that's listening, that's watching us. Oh God, God, heal the brokenhearted on tonight, God. We entrust in you for a healing heart, for a healing spirit, for a healing mind, Lord. Somebody's grieving tonight, oh God. Somebody's bereaving tonight. God, rock them as a baby in your arms tonight and let them know that it's going to be all right. God, we love you. Oh God, we need you. God can't make it without you. I come here praying for the sick. I come here praying for the one behind prison walls. I come praying for the one on the hospital bed tonight. Oh God, I pray for broken relationships, Lord, right now. I pray for the mothers of the church. Oh God, for all of the officers of the church, for every pastor, every church, Oh God, let's open up in your name. God, Lord, lend your ear and your healing power this direction tonight. God, somebody needs you. Somebody needs you, oh God. Somebody needs you like never before. God, help us. Help us, oh God. Touch God like never before. Let a mighty miracle come this direction, oh God. Oh God, help us to entrust in you, Lord. When stuff get in the way of us trusting you, God, help us to trust in you more. God, when the devil starts coming before us, God, you we surrender to you that you will fight our battles, oh God. You will fight our trials, our tribulations, oh God. Move barriers out the way, oh God. God, I give every care and concern that somebody has on their heart and mind right now to you, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God, every person on the sick list, Lord, God, we give them to you. God, I pray for Sister Barbara's mother on tonight. God, look over her, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. God, heal your people. Yeah. God, bless your people. Yeah. God, help us, oh God. God, I pray for brighter days ahead in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 God bless y'all tonight. We will see y'all next time. Amen. Love y'all. Love, Love you and God too. bless you. Amen. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.